and adding, um, what did you make of the Macron sidebar? I mean, the she meet, the Macron she meeting. I not much, not much. And well, you, you know, you, he's going to go back to France saying, I, you know, I told she, you know, where the bottom line is, but no money. I mean, they're going to contrast that with Schultz coming and getting a bunch of deals. That's right. Yeah. The other part is Macron is is trying to project more of an independent position in the in Europe as well uh, versus the U.S. But with his approval ratings now being <sighs> extremely low, I, I mean, think in almost the 30s the, now. Yeah, almost the lowest of his yeah. uh, of his tenure. Tenure. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know that this is going to help. The he, French people, like everybody else, wants to have a better life, a decent life, not a worse life as they're finding today with inflation and energy costs. Well, so mean, diverting the, attention by having meetings with China is only short term, yeah, not going to solve any problems. You start looking at the rail strikes, uh, the, oh, yeah. the, 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 the um, drivers are striking yeah, and they're right. saying, you know, we're not we're not going back on the road and things like this. And you see across the developed world, just more and more economic Did protests, you hear about this? I'm, I'm trying to see if it's, it's, a, it's a true story. Somebody from California sent me an email about how UC system. University of California. Yeah, University of California system. There is a strike by even lecturers and yeah. the teachers and that was that was a while back. Uh, um, what happened is they you know they they weren't paying anybody en enough uh, to live, to live on. especially uh, these TAs, teaching assistants. Mm -hmm. uh, these are generally graduate students, things like that. They get tuition remission, but because of inflation, they literally cannot make ends meet. And they said, "Look, this has to change." But the UC system is having a problem, and the problem is that the number of foreign students coming into the United States Declining. has declined precipitously. And you know what, what a lot of people don't understand is that foreign students don't pay the same as domestic students. That's right. You get an extra surcharge. So this was additional money that these universities have been counting on. Now, the revenues are down, inflation is up. Now they're Costs getting- Costs up. Uh, yeah, yeah, inflation is up. And, and you know, it's un, unsurprisingly, people are saying, look, you know, I can't make it on, on this uh, amount anymore. Especially California. Many things are more expensive than the rest of the country. Yeah. Gasoline, for example. Yeah. Well, yes. uh, almost everything, which yes. is ironic considering yeah. it's a breadbasket. But they have other issues there. I mean, the drought, uh, uh, lack of right. water. I mean, right. they've been depleting the underground water for years. Mm -hmm. And now it's reaching crisis uh, point where they... They, they cannot get the water to the crops. And during a drought periods, this becomes even more critical. So they're lessening their ability to produce food. So. Oh, this is, this is why they've stopped, started to um, tell golf clubs that you cannot water your greens and so on. Well, right? Yeah, but I mean, responsible yeah. golf course uh, design means that what <clears> you try to do is when you water the greens, that all the water goes into internal ponds, and then you use those ponds to rewater things. You lose, of course, you lose some, some. Uh, to evaporation and things <clears> like <throat> that. But you know why they should have been insisting on that a mm -hmm. long time ago. Mm -hmm. But right now you have a competition between people and uh, commerce and agriculture, and agriculture right. for uh, a, a, you know water that is becoming less and less available. Is it? Which river is it that they were trying Colorado. to? Colorado. Colorado. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's just, there, there's just not enough. I mean, you look across the lower Midwest and Utah, all of these places, mm -hmm. all these reservoirs are down. Now they're in Lake Mead, mm -hmm. right? Which is where they have the Hoover Dam. Mm -hmm. The water is so low that they're discovering all the bodies that were dumped there <laughs> over the years. Um, and, you know, it's literally, they're not going to get the hydropower. So, you know, these environmental effects, in, in addition to these geopolitical rivalries, are really push, putting a tremendous amount of pressure on the world economy. And mm -hmm. there doesn't seem to be any end in sight. No one, the G20 was supposed to get together and say, we have an agenda. We need to support COP27, not ignore it. 
We need to start talking about the debt levels for these developing countries. We need to talk about climate change, not in some we'll tax the poor, yeah. <laughs> but how we can jointly solve this, right? How we can meet our commitments. I recall we, G20 was set up after the financial crisis of 2008. It was set up because of the financial That's crisis. That's right, yeah. to address the global financial issue Are we, and the economic do downturn. Do we have a financial issue today? if not more serious than... Yes, but that's then, the issue. Absolutely. This group that was supposed to have all the answers instead is arguing amongst itself about... Condemning Russia. Condemning, well, not only condemning Russia, conde uh, what's your position on China? Yeah. All these things. But it's not far from unified. Amazon prepares to fire 10,000 <laughs> people. Um, our, our friend uh, Elon Musk, uh -huh. who is a... Complete Twitter. subject yeah. in himself yeah. is willy-nilly firing people. Yesterday, he fired somebody by tweet <laughs> who for disagreeing with him. Now, I, I'm trying to understand this. He took over Twitter because it doesn't allow free speech, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And when somebody speaks against him, he fires them. So which is it? Is it just his personal idea of free speech, or is it really about principle? This is very American in terms of the it, principle applies to others, others, <laughs> and not to me. But I so, mean, how, I, I mean, does he wake up in the morning and just yeah. think, well, today is a new day? I mean, I, I, I don't understand. And he's, he's going to lose his investment there. You know, we talked about this. Yeah. We said it was a complete, um, you know, waste of money. Yeah. And, and, and partially a con game too. Yeah, but I mean, how is he gonna get out of this? He, he has no idea. I mean, he's a brilliant uh, engineer, mm -hmm. right? But he has absolutely zero EQ, <laughs> emotion, I mean, emotional uh, quotient. And he's trying to delve into areas of social media where he has no solutions. This isn't an engineered solution. It's, he, he's firing off in all directions. He's gotten panned on his issue about making everyone pay for the check marks and things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Then the next day it was, we're gonna give free check marks to the government, we'll call them gray marks. And then that was undone. Every, every day he changes. And every day it gets worse. And every day more then people he are comes getting fired. Up, he comes up with a big peace plan for Ukraine and Russia too. Oh, yes. He can settle everyone else's problems. That's not right. His own. Not his own. And now he's under pressure because of that $57 billion um, payment that was made by uh, Tesla to him. Mm -hmm. And one of the directors had something very interesting. He said, well, he needed the money for SpaceX. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm trying. I mean, you've been on boards. I've been on boards. I don't recall the last time a CEO showed up at the board meeting and said, hey, listen, I need $57 billion because I'm doing something totally unrelated. It has to this nothing company, to do with this, this company. company. Yeah. And the board saying, yeah, well, that, that sounds like that's reasonable. <laughs> kind of like when he absorbed um, his solar city. Remember that? That's right. Yeah. <clears throat> Sold it to himself. Sold it to himself. Yeah, exactly. And made a profit. <laughs> and he made a profit. I mean, how, just how, how did the board <clears throat> go along with it? Why wasn't there more scrutiny? I mean, this guy has been off the rails. The SEC has him under close watch. They clearly think he violated uh, the SEC laws, which says once you get beyond 5%, you have to declare your intentions, 5% yeah. of the stock. He had accumulated 9% before he decided to say, oh, yes, yes, well, I'm going to try to acquire it. There are all kinds of potential insider trader violations. Yeah, but he just yeah. seems to move in he a He gets, gets away with it. Well, but for how long? Once the money is gone, all mm -hmm. the mystique is gone. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to be a lot of people waiting at his door with little pieces of paper in their hands saying, time to be sued. That's right. Yeah. And he will be. <laughs> okay. Fertility rates are down, but we still reached 8 billion people. <sighs> what does that mean? Well, it depends on which... Uh, kind of economic <clears throat> you ascribe to. If you mm -hmm. believe in the old style economics, 8 billion people represents new markets. Uh, everyone has to eat, they need clothing, things. But the fact is... It also means 
the earth may not be able to withstand the demand in terms of resources of over a billion, over a billion people, in terms of food, in terms of fresh water, in terms of all the physical things which make life what it is today. And this is absolutely going in that direction, unfortunately. And even more unfortunate is the fact that it's the poorest part of the world. That is expanding the world. That is exactly the most rapid. Less than 12 years to add one billion, billion people, people yeah. to the world's population. Less yeah. than 12 years. I, I mean, it's mind boggling. That's right. Because we, all we hear about are the problems of developed countries talking about, well, you know, population is too low. I think China will be very happy that their population is not growing. They're not adding to the pressure on resources mm -hmm. by adding people. And I, think, I do think that they're trying to smooth out their population mm -hmm. tree. I mean, if you look at populations, a healthy population looks like a Christmas tree, very smooth mm -hmm. on the sides, mm -hmm. starts out large. And then as people mm -hmm. pass away, it, it, it gets smaller. And at the top, of course, mm -hmm. that's the end of longevity. But um, China's population tree, due to one child policy, mm -hmm. looks jagged, jagged, and yeah. they're trying to smooth it out. I can understand that. But I don't think in going forward that population is the key to uh, prosperity. I think it's, it's, it's something that needs to be very, very care carefully handled. In terms of producing, the reason why population was significant, the growth of population was significant, including U.S. and Europe taking in a lot of immigrants and low-cost labor, is because of productivity. Human productivity during the industrial age has become significant. And now it's all automated. Yes. In the U.S., less than 2% of the population is involved in agriculture, and yet we produce more food than we can eat. That's right. In terms of food, in terms of all the physical products. And manufacturing. That's right. As it becomes more automated, more That's efficient, right. more, yeah. uh, more robots, uh, things are changing. But what does that mean? More demand on resources. Yeah. Because you're producing more, more efficiently, so you're using more resources more quickly. But if the population were to decline, okay, that would have the opposite effect. Okay. You'd still be able to produce very efficiently. Mm -hmm. There'd still be a lot of uh, increase in productivity, mm -hmm. but you wouldn't necessarily need as many people to drive the economy. Mm -hmm. And this is what it comes down to. We have to make a, have a, a better understanding of how populations and, and growth. I mean, the, the main drivers that I can see from all the research that I've done is that it's corporations who are the ones always pushing this idea that bigger populations is the only way to have financial growth, right? And yeah. I, don't, I don't agree with that. No. And not, yes. not in today's. You know, if you were talking 100 years ago, I would agree. Yes, but not today. But not anymore. Yeah. I mean, there, there were, just going back to G20, US, Australia, France, Netherlands, South Korea, South Africa, Senegal, Canada, Great Britain, all lined up for, uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if uh, there's a South American meeting, which means that in one G20, China will extend through the globe, all right? Whereas the US had just one meeting, uh, two meetings, one with China mm -hmm. and one with uh, Erdogan. There, there are two sides to this. One is, I think, China is taking a more aggressive initiative in terms of making friends worldwide. But it wasn't making friends. I mean, these, these were meetings that were asked for. Requested by requested the other. Requested by the other Even side. the U.S. meeting was requested by requested. the U.S. side. And U.K. I mean, he came in at the last moment, uh, Sunak, the new yeah. prime minister. Uh, I'd be very interested. So that's one, one side is China is willing to spend the time and energy and make the effort because they're making more friends. And they are. Well, I think they're opening lines of communication. I That's think it's right. a signal that, look, we're not erecting walls. We're not closing up. We're not closing up. We're going to continue to engage. Yeah. And I think that was the, the really, for me, it was the only takeaway that was positive mm -hmm. uh, from the G20. Uh, it got hijacked. Um, you know, all the issues about uh, digital transformation, stronger together. Mm -hmm. All right. That was that was the, the theme idea from the, the theme beginning yes uh, for indonesia yeah but those all the things that they were trying uh, you know pandemic 
food security, mm -hmm. all the things that are necessary for people to live. That's right. You know, concerns about the people. Those were the ones that were on the table. And now it's, it's just, I, I, I feel sorry. I think they, uh, Indonesia did the best, I mean, excellently really, really well mm -hmm. with a situation that was really hard to, to deal I with. I remember when we were talking about the G20 a couple of weeks ago, we we're talking about how the Indonesian government is frantically trying to put together sites for bilaterals because there were so many requests <laughs> <Yeah>. bilaterals. <laughs> well, I noticed that all the bilaterals for the Chinese side is they had one conference room. <laughs> yes. And they just consistently... Change the flag. <laughs> change the flag, change the people. <laughs> but the, uh, interesting, the issues uh, pretty much remain the same. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's see what happens. <clears throat> the, the two sides, one is that China, as you said, the takeaway is China's showing it has continued to open up, there's no question. But the second side is these countries are increasingly find that the whole thing about blocking China out of things doesn't work. You can't. I mean, you it's, can't. It, it, it's yeah. time. I mean, there's, I find that the de decreased trust levels will have an impact. You're start, you see companies who are trying to have other sites Mm -hmm. not, they're not going back to Europe, they're not going to the U.S., but they're going to other countries. Um, and they're trying to set up uh, dual uh, manufacturing mm -hmm. uh, so that, but they're not leaving China. No. In fact, they're investing in China. Increasing investment. <laughs> Increasing investment yeah. because they need access to the Chinese market for growth, but they need access to their existing markets to maintain uh, you know, old accounts. Uh, to maintain the business that they have. The, the other it's gonna, part... It's going to be less efficient, though. Yeah. Much less. The other part, the other part about this, however they do this uh, second or reserve manufacturing capacity in another country, basically it's India and Vietnam and possibly a couple of others. Uh, no matter how you do it, it's not as competitive as products meaning higher costs to that's consumers. that's right that's right at a time when inflation is already a problem at a time when the incomes are declining yeah yeah that's it's really is artificial intelligence you know it can play chess write songs poems but you know do do, do people you know, there's always this question are we entering the time of you know the the Arnold Schwarzenegger, the Terminator. Know, the Terminator time, of, you know, will some artificial intelligence deem us unfit mm -hmm. to inhabit the world and decide that, you know, it's time to do away with the, uh, the detritus, the, the, the entities that are driving the world towards um, perhaps a complete collapse? Science fiction. Yeah, I it, agree. It's science but, fiction. I mean, it's, it, it, it is... Our fears are being magnified. And when issues like this come up, and it's very popular in social media right now, I, I think it, what it really shows is that people have lost faith in, the, um, in many of the governments that are supposed to be helping them. I mean, you, you look at the US mm -hmm. on the problems, the, the recent midterm elections, which we'll get to next. I mean, it wasn't a vote of confidence in Joe Biden. No. Despite what he says, I came out stronger. Oh, nonsense. He's, it's still, he's still on track to lose the House, which means that he's a lame duck for the next two yeah. years. Um, but, you know, you, you start reading the polling. They don't like Joe Biden. They only like him slightly better than Donald Trump, Donald who Trump. they really don't like. <laughs> and you can see that in the polls. Right. I mean, it was basically a referendum on Trump on, on, and on his Trump election than deniers. Than I, election than than I, than I, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. The American <clears throat> system, to an extent, worked, but it's not going to work well enough to have a functioning government for the next two years. Well, going back to what you said originally about uh, artificial intelligence, um, people are losing confidence because so many governments are found to be so incompetent in being able to manage the affairs of their state. Their but, population, their society. You know, but you know, they, there's so much emphasis on personalities, right? But the fact is, there's a systematic issue, all right? 14 out of the last 20 midterm elections, mm -hmm. there's been a change, 
right? Mm -hmm. The uh, party of the president has lost votes in the uh, House, Senate, sometimes both. In many cases, it's flipped. I mean, Obama, mm -hmm. he came in, everyone loved him. Two years later, he lost his majority. So he, in essence, he was fighting a rear guard action. Yeah. So what is it? I mean, the problems we can all acknowledge are long term, right? economic, mm -hmm. social divisions, etc. Mm -hmm. These have been building up over a long period of time. Why is it that democracies think that you can solve everything within a two year period or less? Mm -hmm. Because that's right. The referendum, you know, basically, you know, <laughs> that's when the election is. <laughs> the truth is you have much less time. Right now, they say that a president has 100 days to make big changes that will satisfy the population. Or he's out or, you know, loses power. I think 100 days is, uh, even 100 days is optimistic because immediately after the midterms, in fact, right now already plants are afoot. Oh, no, no, I mean, when the president comes in, uh, he has 100 days of grace in order to try to push his agenda through to solve problems that have been built up over decades. Many decades. decades. And, and, yeah. and so this kind of short-term idea, this outlook, whether it's on the corporate level yeah. or individual level, social level, you, you can't, I mean, if you have a direction, it takes more than a hundred days to, <laughs> to, to get it moving. And yet there's no patience. It takes more than a hundred days for them to fill the cabinet. <laughs> even if they're lucky, they can get if it done lucky, in a hundred days. Yeah. So they can't hit the ground running. No. Um, they got a very short period of time before, in essence, there's enough, another referendum on uh, their ability to govern. I, I see that as structurally unsustainable. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that this is against a democracy. I'm just saying that you can't have a system that, you know, ex you can change everything that's been built up over decades within 100 days. Especially, I think th there's another part to it. This is glo global changes. Are becoming very profound. The situation of change in the South, global South, for example, is very, very profound. The old days of looking at developing countries as banana republics, I think it's gone forever. The population yeah. has gotten a lot more sophisticated because of social media and smartphones. Yeah. Information flow is changing. It's rapid. I, I know, but I mean, you have these swings. I mean, Lula, Lula mm -hmm. and Bolsonaro couldn't be more far further apart. That's right. Um, and, and the vote was about 50-50. About 50-50. And whatever yeah. he does, it's going to be opposed by others. But, you know, there's going to be enough. The only need is a small slice of the country, 1%, to switch sides because they're not happy. And change policies and fundamentally. Then, yeah, but not, and policies, but also... You know, relations with other countries. Bolsonaro yeah. has a very different idea about relations with other countries. As we can tell. <laughs> he had a very different idea about the, the Amazon yeah. basin and whether it should be protected or not. Mm -hmm. Now, Lulu has the other, a, a different idea. But I mean, if they're going to seesaw back and forth between one policy and another policy every few Burning years. Burning time, energy, resources in internal battles. But that, that doesn't, doesn't solve any problems. And that, that, that is yeah. something that is going to have to us. So Ukraine, um, he made his speech at the G20. Um, Zelensky uh, said he has a 10-point peace plan, which basically is a capitulation of Russia, of Russia saying, look, we give up. Yeah. What, what do you think? What he proposed is not very different from what he's been saying all along. Yeah, but it's, it's, it doesn't seem to change anything. It doesn't change anything. It doesn't seem to be in a direction of actually finding a solution. Yeah, but I mean, Ma Macron and obviously she talked uh, a lot about what to do uh, in Ukraine. And, you know, we've heard this. You and I both mm. know a lot of the ambassadors um, uh, from the European side. And they are saying, look, China has to help us. Has to. And... You know, and China said, look, you got yourself into the situation. We're not trying to take sides. We're actually against Russia invading any country, let mm -hmm. alone Ukraine, who we had a very good relationship That's with. right. But, you know, there's, I don't understand this expression where you say to me, right, I'm a bad, nasty person. 
and, and by the way, you want me to help you clean up the neighborhood. I, I, I don't, I, I, I can say, look, politically, we need to I, I think politically what this means is that Europe has had enough, wants to find a solution, but they can't really counter the U.S. because U.S. pressure is overwhelming using their common values, democracies, and social, yep. so on. And they would, the Europeans would like to use China but, as a means of... I'm not saying what's in it for China, but I, I am kind of saying China has a problem. The reason it hasn't been, I think, more forceful about the situation with Russia, not declaring Russia, you know, an outlier or anything like that, because that's not going to do any good. No. Is Russia still there? You know, you don't get rid of it. China wants to find a solution. Yeah, but China also wants a... Would, I mean, f frankly, I, I've said, if, if um, Europe wants China to help, why don't they help China? Why don't they say, look, we believe in uh, one China principle. Mm -hmm. uh, this is an internal matter between China and Taiwan. And we believe that it will be successfully um, solved internally and that we are against arming Taiwan and creating an expectation, all right? Sleepwalking into a conflict that no one wants except perhaps the US as a way of weakening. If Europe was more vocal about that. I think China would say, because why does China not condemn Russia? Quite frankly, because they might need Russia if the US does in fact try to get Taiwan to declare independence. And that's, that's right. a red line. Yeah. So you have these complex geopolitical things, but all you're getting from the Europeans is a lecture. You have to do this. Well, you know, you, you, you every day you, you know, Lecturing, on lecturing China yeah. about everything it does wrong, yeah. and you accuse it of genocide, all right? And then you say, oh, by the way, I need you to be a responsible actor in my cause. How, I, I you know, it just, I, I don't understand it. Is there something I'm missing? No, absolutely right. It's basically hypocrisy. Is, uh, but why do they do this? Why can they, how can they possibly come? Because of colonial mentality. You still because think it's I, racism, yeah. I would, I'd have to agree. Racism, colonial mentality, worried about the yellow hordes and all this stuff. Others. I don't think it's just uh, Asia. I think it's China because of its success. 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 Yeah. But you see a lot of this still post-colonial uh, attitude towards... Absolutely. Um, you know, especially Africa. the Anglo-Saxons, yeah. especially the Anglo-Saxons. Well, it's turned into, you know, the Anglosphere, yeah. plus a few in Europe. Europe. And it's The most it's pragmatic troublesome. are the Germans, actually. So, I mean, the, right now, um, I mean, let's talk about Kyrgyzstan uh, in the Ukraine. Mm -hmm. What people fail to understand is they should look at a map and understand that there's a river Mm -hmm. Okay. That runs through. Yeah. The, and Kyrgyzstan is on the, uh, on the west bank of the river. Mm -hmm. So the Russians are retreating to the east bank of the river, of the Dnieper yeah. River. Yeah. All right. That would make strategic sense. You can't, it's very difficult to hold it. The bridges have been knocked out, etc. Difficult to resupply it, etc. So they did a strategic withdrawal line, but it doesn't mean the war is over. It doesn't mean Ukraine has won. And, you know, the Russians are digging in on their side of the river. Obviously, it would be very, just as difficult for Ukraine to get to the other side, side of, the of the river. river. Yeah. And things are hardening. But in the end, only a diplomatic solution will work. I, I don't see a military solution. I, I, Absolutely. Yeah. I don't understand it. Because the way the Russian withdrew means that now the Ukrainian troops in that entire area may be encircled by the Russians, potentially. Well, they could be, but I mean, it's the river, I think, that yeah. it's a defensive position. One last uh, issue. Has the United States, in essence, accepted North Korea as a nuclear power? How many times have we heard that no president could, in essence, accept the DPRK as a nuclear power? There's and still a, be reelected, but it seems to be de facto. Yeah, exactly. This is this is my issue with this, 
is whether or not it's a fact that it's a nuclear power. It would seem that it is. All right. They certainly have had enough nuclear tests. tests. There's concern about a seventh nuclear test. Yeah. Um, although, you know, most recently they, uh, they found one of the missiles that was fired off and discovered it's really old. Yeah. It's an old Russian missile that they got probably 40, 30, 30 years, 40, years, yeah. 40 years ago. So it's, it's not clear. I still, you know, as we talked about last time, I think this is a uh, plea for help or, uh, you know, try to get attention That's right. uh, by the DPRK, which is in very serious economic, economic pressure, uh, pressure right. right now. But whether or not it's to be declared as a nuclear state is a factual issue. Well, uh, you could say the same thing about Israel. It's a factual issue. Israel it is factually, a nuclear power. It, the, the fact that <laughs> Israel has nuclear weapons Plenty is the of worst them kept secret in the world. world that's right. And yet the US has not said one thing. Europe has not said one thing about it. And yet you still hear voices saying that um, it is de facto a apartheid state, which mm -hmm. is trying to deprive Palestinians within the state mm -hmm. uh, of, of their basic rights, human rights. Basic human rights. Yeah. Uh, embargoes, I mean, there's on a daily basis uh, there are attacks on Israelis and attacks by Israelis on Palestinians. Um, it doesn't seem like it's going to end. And Netanyahu is now back, back in, charge. in charge. And yeah. he, put, he put the most conservative anti-Palestinian who said Palestinians should all be killed. All right. This is the final solution. What an irony, right? That an Israeli final would solution. say, talk about what the final solution should be. That's right. I mean, and it, w once but again, coming back democracy to is not working in Israel. Yeah. It is coming, coming back to the question of uh, North Korea, mm -hmm. um, whether or not you declare it to be a nuclear state, you have to plan as if it is a nuclear state. Well, obviously. Yeah, yeah right. And I think this is how not only U.S., Japan, and South Korea is looking at the situation, but also China. Well, next week, more. More fun stuff. Well, we'll be looking at uh, what happens uh, at APEC. Yes. Uh, Xi Jinping is going. Um, Joe Biden has decided to miss for personal reasons, so he's <laughs> sending Kamala Harris. Uh, she's not exactly making a very big splash. I don't know how seriously people will uh, take her. But, you know, throughout all of these things you were mentioning earlier when we were talking before about 80, $800 million in a framework that is being proposed by the Biden administration for ASEAN. 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 Yeah. Okay, this is over a period of years, mm -hmm. and he doesn't have the money. And... <laughs> If he loses the lower house, which is a 99.99% possibility, yeah. probability, yeah. he won't be able to even vote the money through, even if Democrats were willing to say, OK, we want to invest more money in an area which is growing at you know, 4% when we're growing at 1%. Yeah. I just I don't see it. So, you know, a, a lot of empty words, promises. 800, 800 million of so far pie in the sky yes. in an economy of ASEAN countries that's approaching nine trillion a year. Yeah, I, yeah it doesn't. Less than 1%. But, I mean, but this is a, it, what I see here is a pattern. You saw the same thing in South America. That's right. Africa, yeah. Middle East. There's always a framework, but no substance. <clears throat> and as far as the ASEAN countries are concerned, total trade with China is now three times that of total trade with the U.S. And growing. And growing. Yeah. So peace and development is their theme. Well, I mean, with the global south uh, looking increasingly uh, not to choose sides, but simply to pursue economic uh, mm. you know, interest, collaboration, collaboration yeah. um, I just wonder if, if Europe and, Amer well, America in particular, but Europe possibly, are looking, they think that they're building walls around China. It, to, it appears to me, if you look at the map, that they're in essence closing themselves in. That's right. Yeah. So US and Europe, 
live in your own world. The well, rest of the global think, south. I think, I think Europe is waking up to the hard That's realities. Right. So yeah. it'll be very interesting to see how their position matures. Uh, there are two, thing, two things will happen. Number one, it'll be a very harsh winter. Mm -hmm. And the European population is going to find that you can't eat common values. Well, look, you know, everyone should have principles and every yeah. country is different. And I, I agree. I mean, I mean, it's like religion. What you believe, I, I, will, I believe I should protect what you believe, mm -hmm. right? That you have your own uh, set of beliefs and that we should all be free to have our sets of beliefs. But the moment that you say that your beliefs have to be mine on the pain of, you know, like the happened in history so many times, you either believe what I believe or I have to kill you. I mean, you know, we saw this with the Crusades. That's right. uh, we saw this in many, many other instances where yeah. religion um, and different belief systems were used as an excuse to kill people, including between Christians, Catholic and Protestant, Protestant. 100 years right. war, the Westphalian but uh, you, treaty. You know, if you go one step further, I, I still come back to the colonial mentality but, you know, but that's a blip in history. That's mm -hmm. 350 years out of 5,000 years of recorded history. Empires have risen and fallen in shorter periods of time. But that colonial mentality, as well as we talk about empires, what happened in terms of targeting the Jews in Germany and so on and so forth, and the racism that came with that, uh, I'm just afraid that this big segment of the European population, especially those who are more conservative, more colonial oriented, or racist oriented, will really move in a direction that becomes very, very dangerous mm -hmm. in terms of attitude toward Asians and China in particular. Yeah. Okay, are we set? Yeah. Okay.